These are the days of his service, servant Moses, righteousness be in. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Come on, help me sing. These are the days of Elijah. These are the days of Elijah. Declaring the word of the Lord. <laughs> the days of his servant Moses. Righteousness being restored. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Ayala Bush, Ataya. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Lift your voice. Year of Jubilee. The days of Ezekiel. Dry bones becoming a flesh. Oh, yes. Rebuilding the temple of grace. The last days of the harvest is here. The fields are all wide throughout the world. We are the laborers in the Lord's vineyard, declaring the words of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, and the trumpet call in your voice. Is the year of Jubilee, out of Zion till salvation come. Hallelujah. We are the laborers in the vineyard of the Lord, declaring hallelujah we declare the word of god we declare the counsel of god we speak the living word of god that man may hear and live i tell you something if you can hear the word of god if you can receive the word of god you don't have eternal life god has commissioned us and commanded us to speak his word speak it expressly speak it the way we hear it declare it that those that here may live jesus said that i tell you surely the hour is coming and now is that those that hear the voice of the son of man shall live he doesn't want you to die he doesn't want you to perish if you're hearing the word of the lord open up your heart and let him have his way we are here again this morning this is Thursday morning. Glory to Jesus. We are here again to speak for the word of God. We have been handling it. Today is Thursday, the 12th day in the month of January 2023. And this is our first week in this year as we continue to speak for the word of God. We are handling the topic, your body and your assignment on the earth. Your body. And your assignment on the earth. We've been able to go some distance already as the spirit of God is directing us. We began by doing the introduction about the body. Your body, your physical body that houses your spirit. You know, you are a spirit. You only live in a body. And when you die, your body is buried, but your spirit continues to live. God told Adam, surely the day that you eat of this fruit will surely die. He's referring to the death, both of the spirit, the soul, and then the body. He mentioned very clearly that the quickening that comes to us when we get the Lord Jesus in our heart, the Bible called it born again. It is the quickening of your spirit. Your spirit gets renewed because it was dead. The Bible says we are dead in sin. Now the physical body is what we are focusing because we see that a lot of people are giving life here on earth and they are not fulfilling purpose. Your physical body, if you die, you will no longer have the privilege 
to live on it. You know, we have handled this. On Tuesday, we began to look at the dimensions of the body. When God said, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, we read it in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 11. He said, he will quicken your mortal body. That word, quicken, means to vitalize, means to give life to your mortal body. I hope you know this mortal body is racing towards death. It's racing towards the grave. You give birth to a child today, by tomorrow they'll ask you, how old is the baby? A day old, and then three months old, and then 30 years old, and 70 years old, and 90 years old. Everyone you see today that is old, very old. You know, I like looking at old people, wrinkled. I see them. Some of them are bent because of age. Some of them are wrinkled. You see the wrinkles on their face? I look at them. I see the gray hair coming up and i like, wow, come on now. And you see the pictures when they were much younger. You also see when they were children. I like looking at these things. It lets me look at the limitedness of the natural life. I thank God for internal life. But if you don't know how to maximize your life, life on earth here you will be of all men most miserable for all eternity god wants us to understand why he has placed on on earth especially in this new year that god has given us the lord will want us to know why he has given us life he will want you to understand the purpose the assignment he placed you on earth another here year is here in case you have not understood before now all the years of your life what your purpose is your purpose is not just to live to eat to grow old to make yourself more comfortable to acquire some wealth you know we handled about acquiring wealth towards the end of last year we are we understood that some people that made all the money they discovered that it was nothing we talked about alexander the great he was a young man that died at the age of 32 he has conquered the entire world world he has won so many treasures when he was dying he knew he was not recovering and he called his generals he told them listen i wanted to do three things for me he began to mention strange things he told them he wants the physicians to, to carry him to the graveyard he said he wants his hands to come out open like this open i don't know how they're going to construct that a coffin that will have to show the bare hands of a dead man that is going to be buried he mentioned another one that he wants all the things he has accumulated in life to be poured on the road on the way to the graveyard he wants people to know that everything you acquire is nothing is meaningless he called it dust that these things are nothing they are valueless and this is what a lot of people are wasting their time pursuing if you come to the very point that you know you are departing from earth that is when the reality of this thing will dawn on you but if you are men like men like like Paul, he came to the end of his life. He said, I've fought a good warfare. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course. There is a course and it's a course of life where this body needs to be maximized and utilized and when it's time for you to go, you can say, now I am looking forward to my departure. Come on now. I have seen men who have died. They died excitedly. I have read about men who have accomplished their purpose on earth. When it was time to die, they were looking forward because Apostle Paul said it is not only for him but for those who are looking forward for his appearing if you look forward to, to the appearing of the Lord your life will be meaningful your life will be purposeful you will discover that a lot of things will be eliminated out of your life there are so many things that are clinging and clinging into the life of some people because they are not living according to purpose we have handled some things already today is Thursday Day. and we want to concentrate on this thing the sustaining that we get from the spirit of god god said if the spirit of him that raised up jesus from the dead if he dwells in you he will vitalize your mortal body that means weakness is not permitted to hinder you in fulfilling your assignment we looked at apostle paul we saw how he was able to accomplish all that was given to him jesus appeared to him and told him they have apprehended you in june they were going to go to Rome, you are going to testify before kings, before all that matter. Be bold. 
hold on. It's my destiny for you. You know, that was what God told him. He said, I've showed him how many things he will suffer for my sake. Do you know that there are things that God has carved out that you should fulfill in life? My prayer for you this year is that you'll be able to discover them and fulfill them. You may say, I'm not called to be a preacher, but there is something you are called to do. What is it? Have you discovered it? That thing that when you discover, even your physical food will lose its test. You will prefer pursuing it. One of the signs that you will discover about your passion in life is those things you do that gives you fulfillment, that gives you satisfaction as if you have eaten and well, well fed. We're going to look at that today as we look at the scriptures. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We want to read and we are talking about the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. I'm reading the book of John chapter 4. From there, we're going to find that this dimension of the quickening of the spirit of God that seems to defy the laws of this body. You know, this quickening the Holy Ghost is talking about in the word of God in Romans chapter 8 verse 11 is superior to the operation of the human body. What we saw Apostle Paul display is not normal. We read it in Acts of the Apostle chapter 28 that people were looking at him. They were expecting him to swell up and die because that is what happens to people that are beaten by that kind of viper. They were expecting him to fall down suddenly and die. They looked for a long time. Their expectations didn't come to pass and they now had a change of mind. What happened? What was working in him? quickened him, made him not to be overcome by the bite of the enemy, and he continued to fulfill his agenda. And this year, I am meant to understand by the Spirit of God that there are things the enemy will send you away. Some of them will come like a storm. Some of them will come as if you have been beaten. Ah, instead of you being uh, victorious, it looks as if you went under. But let me tell you clearly, it doesn't matter if the storms have broken your ship in pieces like Apostle Paul. The Bible says some of them, they have to arrive on the pieces. Pieces, imagine all the full structure you have in Inter that is carrying you to your great future seems to have collapsed and you are having only pieces of the, of the ship that once was a ship loaded with hundreds of people you are taking care of and feeding and suddenly it has disintegrated to pieces. Make sure you hold on to this power that can revitalize you and give you a greater testimony at the end of the year. The year is before us and we are trusting God that the quickening of the Holy Ghost will continue to help us as we go forth to fulfill our assignments. We are reading the book of John chapter 4. It's the story about Jesus. At that point, we saw what happened. The Bible says, John chapter 4. I want to read from verse 8. For his disciples had gone into the town to buy supplies. To buy food. Yes. The Bible says, So the Samaritan woman said to him, How can you a Jew? Ask me a Samaritan woman for water to drink. For the Jews use not the Jews use nothing in common with the Samaritan. Jesus answered, Hey. If you had known the gift of God and who it is who said unto you, give me some water to drink, you could have asked him and he could have given you living water. Sir, the woman said to him, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where then do you get this living water? Surely you are not greater than our ancestor Jacob, are you? For he gave us this well and drank from it himself along with his sons and livestock. Jesus replied, everyone who drinks of this water will be tasty again. If you read this, you'll continue to see the conversation that was going on between Jesus and this woman. And it came to a point where Jesus came to a point. He said, woman, the woman said to him, sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain. And Jesus replied and said, believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will not worship the father, neither on this mountain or in Jerusalem. 22. You people worship what you do not know. We worship 
worship what you know because salvation is from the Jews. Ay, ay, ay. But a time is coming and now is where when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such that will worship him. Note that. The Father seeks such people to be his worshipers. God is spirit and those are worshiping, worshiping in spirit and the truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one that is called Christ. Whenever he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I, the one speaking to you, am he. This is the height of it. At this point in this conversation, the Bible says, now at that time, very moment, at that very moment, his disciples came back. They were shocked because he was speaking to a woman. Hey, however, no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? When the woman left her water, then the woman left her water jar went off into the town to say to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Surely he can't be the Messiah, can he? So they left the town and began coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat, eat something. We knew you were hungry. Eat something. They have gone to buy food. By the time Jesus was at the well, I believe at that time he was very, very hungry hungry he was so hungry and so weak he had to sit down by the well and wait for them because to preach is one thing you can look at the one that is preaching i tell you is a job to preach and it can sap strength and energy here we see that maybe they have finished some of the programs they were on their way to go through samaria to go to where they were going the, the, samaria at that time was not their destination they needed to pass through it and he was tired he was hungry when and when when the disciples came back and told him and said, Jesus, please, we have bought the food. Rabbi, eat something. But he said unto them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. So the disciples began to say to one another, no, no one brought him anything to eat. Did they? Then Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to complete his work. My food my nourishment, I want to read the King James, he said. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. We are talking about the sustenance. There is a formula that was in operation in the life of Jesus. And it's available for you and I if we are to fulfill the word of God. If you have not come to the point where you are, you are desperate for the, for the nourishment of your body. And suddenly you realize that there is a greater hunger. If you have not discovered that there are things in your life that comes as a pressure that will push you to the point that you are neglecting your physical food to pursue them. We are talking about fulfilling assignments on earth. We are talking about, you know, men that eat food. The Bible says even food for the belly or belly for the food. Both the food and the belly will perish one day. Remember, it was food. Eating. Eat of this tree of life. No. They went for the tree of good and evil. What you eat. What you eat. So many people are craving, running after what to eat and what to drink. And the first temptation was in this. No wonder the devil knew it has been effective in the life of people. And he presented Jesus with the same thing. You are hungry, Jesus. If you are the son of God, command these stones. Command them to be food and you will eat. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. We can see Jesus demonstrate it here. He was hungry physically, but when he saw the assignment, when he saw the will of God, when he discovered there is a soul here, and that woman was the link and the opening to the entire city of Samaria, something came upon Jesus. His natural hunger was abated. Something just happened, and he dived into that purpose to fulfill your assignment on earth. You need to be quickened by your the spirit of god to quicken your body because this body of yours that complains 
you know there is something about fasting by the way i discovered something about fasting i was studying the scriptures as i found out about how jesus was nourished you know it takes the strength of the lord to run as i mentioned it was elijah that ate that food and ran there is a spiritual fruit and the, the substance jesus was talking about it is the assignment the assignment the fulfillment of your purpose and destiny that should be your nutrition he said his nutrition comes from doing the will of God, not by just eating. We need to sustain our body. You have to eat or else you will die. But some people are so indulged in eating, in food, to the extent that they are not laying aside time to lay hold. This year, we have already fasted the first seven days of the year. Brutal fasting without food. No food. Breaking with fruits massive fasting and praying for the entire 365 days because this year must deliver according to the word of God Jesus said when you fast he didn't say if it's not an option it is a necessity here we see Jesus embarking a denial of food again call it a kind of fasting yes because he needed to fulfill something. While I was looking out this scripture, I was checking out these scriptures, I discovered something that was very, very, you know, I never knew. There was this time that Jesus came down from Mount, in the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. He came down, he was confronted with men, all gathered because of a young man that was possessed. And the father was begging Jesus, heal him. And after Jesus had driven out the demons and they were coming back home, the disciples were asking Jesus, why couldn't we cast him out? Why couldn't we cast him out? And Jesus said, this kind cannot go out except by fasting and prayer. So I began to check up my scriptures. I want to get all of them. The one in Matthew, the rendering in Mark, Luke, you know. And I found out something here. In the book of Matthew chapter 17, I read from verse 20. Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, remove hence unto yonder, and it shall be re removed, and nothing shall be impossible with you. How be it? This kind, that is verse 21 of Matthew 17. This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting now i love using different translations so i looked up this i wanted to read it from another translation this kind goeth not out so there are kinds there are kinds that will go out and there are kinds that will not go out in fasting and prayer you in fasting you needed to add your fasting to your prayer for some dimensions to move i believe that if jesus have opted the option of eating Hey, I'm so tired. After all, I just finished preaching to the crowd and we are still having a big journey ahead of us to go and minister to the other people. Let me just relax. After all, it's just one woman. I can just forfeit it. Besides, I'm very hungry. He took that option of ministry. Sometimes your body can limit you. That is why you need the quickening of the Holy Ghost. Yes. He said this same spirit of God that raised up Jesus from death, he will quicken your mortal body. You need the quickening of your mortal body. I pray that no part of you will be limited because of the weakness. No assignment of your purpose this year will be limited because of the weakness of your body. Jesus went ahead and trusted God for strength. He ministered to this woman to the east extent that when the disciples had brought the food, he told them, no, I have food to eat that you do not know of. It is sustaining. It is nourishing. It is feeling like a physical food. I told you something. After these seven days, the first seven days, we still have more fasting. Like today, we are still fasting. I'm adding it to prayer because we have some routine. We don't just fast monthly. We fast weekly. Why? Because we know there are dimensions that must bring Wake up in fasting and prayer. So while I was reading this place, I discovered something. And I was like, what is this? I started looking out for the other translations. I discovered something in NIV, New International Version. Doesn't have Matthew chapter 17 verse 21. I didn't see it there. What I saw was omitted from the main text. Why will this verse be omitted? I saw the message Bible. The message Bible have it in verse 21. And they were grouping yes. And look at this. I discovered what is happening. Why is this verse not there? 
NIV doesn't have it. New Living Translations doesn't have it. But New King James Version have it. This kind cannot go out except by fasting and prayer. Before now, I've had people talk about some verses of the scriptures that are omitted by these newer translations. They are beautiful. They explain this King James, old King James English in a, in a simpler English. You can read it and understand it better. But I discovered something because someone have told me before, have you noticed there are some verses that we are omitted? I didn't really pay attention to that. But today I discovered that this verse that is very important about fasting, this kind cannot go out except by fasting and by prayer. It was omitted. No one that this thing is being omitted in the life of the people. They'll prefer prayer, you know. But when it comes to brutal fasting, Jesus said, when you fast, he recommended fasting. He knows that it's something you cannot do without. For your dumb people overindulge us in food has become a sickness to them. Yes. Do you know that when you fast, one of the things it does, it cleanses your system. It makes, it refreshes you. You even look younger. You look more energetic. And more, what is more, you are building your spiritual tenacity. You are doing things you couldn't do before. Jesus was able to through the, to, through the denial of the food, even when the food arrived. <laughs> he said, no, I have a meat to eat. I have a food to eat. You don't know nothing about the discipline of food is what I want to beg you this year. Today, Thursday, 12th of January, in all you do, embark on fast. If you have not begun to fast for this year, please start it. And when you start, you're going to have some battles. The devil will tell you, must you go all the way? Why don't you just break, break by 12? Determine to seek the face of God for the year. And when you pray, there is a purpose in praying and there is a purpose in fasting. Some people want to fast because they want to reduce their weight. <laughs> that is not fasting. You are just going on hunger strike. I'm talking about fasting for a purpose. Jesus denied the food. He was sustained by the purpose of what he was pursuing. To the extent he told them, I, I am filled. I have a food to eat. You don't know nothing about. Wow. You don't know nothing about. Disciples didn't understand that kind of food, that kind of diet. He was able to minister to this woman, not only to this woman, the entire city. They begged Jesus to stay two extra days. Why? He was able to break through into that dimension of ministration because of his denial of the physical food. I trust the Lord to give you the strength to persevere in fasting and prayer, in this, especially this January. Yes, we began our own. Immediately, we stepped into the crossover, into the year. Our fasting started the first seven days. We were fasting and praying, declaring throughout the year. That doesn't mean that we're not going to fast again. Periodic fasting comes and goes. It disciplines you. I remember the Lord disciplining me through fasting. Those days, I was on duty. I will fast. And when it's time for me to break my fasting, I fasted from home. I came to the office. I finished fasting. I continued. I wanted to break my fasting. And I remember a particular day, I just finished fasting. I bought the food I wanted to eat. My chilled Coke. My bottle of coke was there and my food, very hot food, and I wanted to eat. And somebody just walked in and the Lord said, the person, hey, Joy, you're eating. Hey, I will eat. And those days, people can just join you to eat. And I was like, oh, no, this is what I just want to eat. I just finished fasting. And the Lord was like, let it go. Let it go. The person ate the food. And this person was not fasting. Me, I've been fasting. Until you know how to discipline yourself in food, you are not really making any headway. I tell you, when it has to do with peppers. Another time, I was to eat. Nobody was there this time. I was, I was just finished. Brutal praying and fasting. And I wanted to descend on this food. <laughs> and while the food was before me, I heard the Lord say, Joy, leave this food. Don't eat it now. I was like, wow. I just finished fasting. I'm hungry. I should eat. What is the Lord teaching me again? I left that drink. I left that food. And the Lord said, don't remove it. Keep it in front of you. I want to teach you discipline. I, the food was before me. The hot food went and became cold. And the hot, cold drink became warm. As in, it lost all this. Thing. It was before me. I could have just started eating my food. But I was like, the Lord is teaching me discipline. 
If you don't know how to develop discipline, fasting is one of the things that can teach you that. Some things will not be broken in your life. Some people, some sicknesses in your body, all you need to do is to engage in fasting and praying and discipline that body. You discover that that thing will be broken out of your life. There are hereditary, the Lord is making me to understand, there are hereditary diseases and sicknesses that runs in the family somebody hearing me you need to engage in this kind of fasting deny yourself and speak to that situation it will be broken i'm trusting god that our body will not limit us in fulfilling the agenda that god has for us in our life especially this year i want to pray for somebody who says it's like i'm getting over indulged i see people i see people i see them that they, they, they are just together but when it comes to some things they allow things some of them may not be food necessarily but they see themselves overwhelmed in circumstances they're not able to 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 have self-control i want to pray for you you know what you're supposed to do, but you don't have the tenacity to do it. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for somebody that is saying, I don't have discipline in fasting. But I know I have purpose. I don't see myself achieving it and years are going. This year will be the beginning of the best days where you begin to fulfill what God has given to you. Can you pray with me? Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your mercy. You have given me another year. I need to fulfill my destiny. And I'm asking you today to have mercy on me. Go ahead and say, Lord Jesus, you are my Lord. You're my Savior. I ask that you give me the power to overcome the things of the flesh that pulls me down. Teach me this discipline that you observed. How that I should not live by bread alone, but by every word. How to forfeit physical food for spiritual nourishment. Lord, I receive it today. I pray for you throughout the year. Everything you need to fulfill and accomplish destiny, let it come upon you. Everything sucking your spiritual strength, I declare that they are rebuked out of your life. Receive strength, receive vigor, receive new grace. In the name of Jesus, I speak today into today. Today is Thursday in the name of Jesus. Thursday, the 12th day. Yes, the 12th day of January. I always say this thing before I make this declaration. Let me tell you this. The works of wickedness have already calibrated days. And they have already planned some deaths. I told you how it was that I was looking at one of my colleagues several years ago. I didn't know that he has been marked for death. But my spirit perceived it and I was watching him walk away and few minutes later he was dead. Something was calculated. I want to make a declaration into today. Because there are people carelessly walking into what the enemy has projected. Can I take two, some few minutes and handle this? There are people that carelessly walk into what the devil has projected, what the enemy has pronounced. Some of you will see it in the dream. And by the time you wake up in the morning, you, you even forgot the dream. Maybe it is an accident, an affliction, a setback, a demotion, an attack. You don't just live your life carelessly. I want to make a declaration, not only today, but I speak into the year 2023. You will not be a casualty. In the name of Jesus, projections of affliction, projections of infirmity, projections of diseases, projections of setback in your business, projections of failed marriages, projections that are sent from the pit of hell, it will not be effective in your life. And right now I lift up my voice and I begin to declare every walk of wickedness in your vicinity, every walk of darkness in this environment, hear the word of the Lord today. Every agent of darkness, I speak as the oracle of God today. Everything that has been projected into this year, everything that has been projected over the people, the spirit of failure, the spirit of sickness, the spirit of backwardness, I declare as the servant of God that those projections are hereby neutralized. I declare in the name of 
Jesus, it will not see the light of day. Child of God, you are delivered from the clutches of darkness. They will no longer have any hold over you. In the name of Jesus, whatever calculated failure that have been sent your way, I declare they are neutralized in the name of Jesus. I declare today you are empowered to go forth into your purposes, into your business, into that thing that God has called you into. You shall fulfill purpose in the name of Jesus. When men are saying there is a casting down, your testimony will be that there is a rising up, rising up in your finances, rising up in your health, rising up in the purpose and the counsel of God for your life. The blood is speaking for you and speaking for your loved ones. In the name of Jesus, I want you to have a beautiful day today. It's Thursday. Tomorrow we'll be here. We'll be here to round up this. I wish we have time. We have so much to handle. If the Lord permits us to carry on next week, we're going to do that. If not, please, I want you to look into the word of God. We have quoted so many scriptures in the body and the assignment you have on earth. Look into those scriptures. Go through these videos again. Listen to them. Pick out the scriptures. Engage in prayer. Add your fasting to it, and the Lord will do amazing things. Have a beautiful day. It's a day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Behold, it comes. Riding on the clouds. Shining like the sun. Hallelujah.